Next Up is a product designed to prevent home intruders. Hi, Sharks. I'm Tony and this is Aaron. And we're from Gilbert, Arizona. Spiders, cockroaches, scorpions, bedbugs, ants, and even rodents. Ooh. <laughs> but these nasty, creepy crawlers do not stand a chance with our product. We're here today to introduce Slick Barrier. Whatever you're doing right now, I need you to stop what you're doing and give some super claps to two super entrepreneurs that were just in Shark Tank, Super Tony Gonzalez and Super Aaron Gonzalez. Woo! Welcome, guys. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having us. Good. Thank you. Oh, uh, you are both uh, so welcome. So welcome. Thank you so much for reaching out and wanting to come on the show and talk about your experience and uh, business and everything in between. Oh, yeah. We're ready. <laughs> so, all right. So as we always start out, what was your relationship with Shark Tank prior to knowing that you were going to potentially get to go on Shark Tank and potentially get to air? Um, so we it, it was kind of funny. A, a few years before we actually got on the show, this was pre-COVID, uh, uh, Shark Tank would go around to local cities and they would have tryouts. So we actually applied for it back then when we first, first started the business. And, uh, and we actually got pretty far in that process. Um, there was about 400 or so people that showed up in Phoenix to try out for the show. Again, this was pre COVID when people used to do stuff like this. Right. And then, uh, and then we, we got through the first, uh, three rounds. And then we got to the point to where they were really interested. We, we kind of came out of this region and then, um, and then they asked us for a whole bunch of stuff. They like give you literally like a package about this big full of just information you have to get to them. And then we also had to make a, a 20 minute video and we had sent all that in and they said like, all right, well send it all in. And, um, if we, if we want to do something with you, we'll, we'll, reach out. If we don't, then, well, you just won't hear from us. So that was our first experience with Shark Tank. Oh, and we didn't hear from them. And we didn't hear from them. <laughs> but, but, but they were intrigued. I mean, I definitely thought that they thought it was a cool idea, but it was pretty early for us. We had just kind of started with the concept. Um, and, uh, and we, so it, it was a, you know, it was a good taste where we thought like, hey, you know, these, this is something interesting that they would probably like. But it was also a lot of work, and then we didn't get anything out of it. So, <laughs> so then fast forward, and I could let Tony kind of explain a little bit more on how we actually got on the show the second time around. Yeah, we. I mean, obviously, we're fans of the show. We watch it. Our kids watch it. Our, I mean, it's just it's it's something you do as a family, like everyone else, and and that's what we've we've known we've noticed as we've we've met people how they watch it as a family. We were the same way. Um, but it was, it was probably in May of last year and Aaron and I were thinking, cause the product that we, that we make, uh, obviously slick barrier, clear coatings for, uh, pest control. Um, we were just selling it to pest control companies. We weren't selling it to the public. Uh, we did the service ourselves. So if somebody wanted it done, we would do it for them. But we decided we were just going to start boxing it up and selling it to consumers. And as we were thinking about that idea in May. Aaron, he sent me a text. I even, I still have it. And he's like, Hey man, he's like, we should try to get onto Shark Tank with this. And I remember my response was like, damn, that would, that'd be awesome. And then, and then I, as I sat there, I said, you know what? Screw it. I, I don't, I'm not going to look at any application. I'm not going to look at the website. I'm just going to start sending content to producers, to uh, casting producers. And I sent a ton of stuff out there. And, uh, and I told Aaron, I said, it'd be nice if we heard from them. And then boom, like maybe two weeks later, we heard something and they said, ah, we, we actually watched one of your videos. We're interested. And, uh, and that started the process. Um, and quite honestly, uh, honestly, we were, um, we were, I, I don't know if we were shocked necessarily because we really like what we do. Um, but I think when we could talk more about it, we were kind of shocked with, Every email you'd get, you're thinking, I'm on Shark Tank, but you're like, yeah, you're, you're not on Shark Tank. You got a hundred more steps to go. Mm -hmm. And they always <laughs> tell you that too. They always say like, you guys are on the show until you're actually on the show, but keep working at it. Um, and we just kept working at it, working at it. We sent them a really cool demo video that we were really proud of. And I think after we made that video, we kind of thought in the back of our heads, like, well, worst case scenario, you know, 
this is going to be good TV, you know, because we were, you know, you guys obviously saw it. We brought on all the scorpions and the roaches and the rats. So we thought, like, worst case scenario, you know, I mean, it might not necessarily be something that they think fits the show or the or the sharks, but it's going to be a cool TV show. Um, so I was pretty confident that once those producers started reaching out and they saw that content and we made that really cool video, um, I thought we had a really, really good ch chance of getting it. But again, it was like a lot of work and they kept telling you, like, you guys aren't on the show until you're on the show, but keep working. You're not. And they kept reiterating that message with us. Well, and then you film it, right? And even though you step off stage and you're excited and they go, you're still not on Shark Tank yet. <laughs> yeah, still not on there yet. We still could pull the plug any second. So we're just like, all right. Yeah, I mean, that that is a uh, a common theme, you know, with with everybody that has been on the show is that you, you just don't know um, until you till three weeks before it's going to air. And, yeah. and even then, like there could be a massive, um, as we saw last season, uh, when when Russia, uh, when Russia invaded Ukraine, they, oh, yeah. they pulled Shark Tank, that Shark Tank episode uh, to air a, a special talking about it and and all. So you just never know, like anything could happen. Um, yeah. There could be, you know, another OJ Simpson level, you know, parade down the highway yeah. uh that that they cut to instead you know instead you just yeah. don't know what's going to happen so well um, and, and stuff did happen i mean you know we don't have to get into it but but there was some uh there were some some headlines um that day that it aired i think or the day before and um you know and so all the media we they were all interested in us all week long before it aired everybody wanted to talk to us and see us and then breaking news happened and all of a sudden nobody wanted to see us and we we're like oh my gosh you know and they fit us in still but it was they, they were still breaking news yeah well I, exactly so like you just never know what you know what could cut into that and then how long it might push it back and um and then if it ever actually i mean we saw one episode that got pushed back uh, a whole season uh oh. during the COVID season there was a a season or an episode that was filmed in season 11 because see season 12 was the first one where they were all spread apart and they put like a disclaimer in the front like hey you know, this was not filmed during this time. <laughs> and and if, when you check on like Wikipedia, it shows it was filmed the, the season before. It just never aired, which, you know, how how devastating could that be? Like, yeah. you, 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 air, you know, you do it and then it's like you never get the call. You never get the email saying, hey, it's it's going live in three weeks. And and then you get COVID happens and you just don't know, right? Like, if, yeah. is it ever going to happen? And then you wait until a few episodes, uh, six episodes, seven episodes into the season to see it. But so... Uh, so you guys, so, uh, you guys get, go through the, the gauntlet. Um, I love that you, you took the route of just like putting something together and just like putting it in front of the, uh, the casting, I guess the producers, casting producers, casting directors, um, and, and, uh, and enabled them to, to see it almost as if it was like their idea. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the funny thing is, is we had just finished, uh, I had just finished reading a book and we had gone to a conference and there's this kid that wrote this book called like The Back Door. And um, and that's what he talked about. You know, sometimes you have the, the, the traditional way of doing things, but sometimes there's always that. I think it's like the back door, the third door. I can't remember what it's called, but <laughs> but but for us, we were like, you know what, let's do that. And so once I started, then Aaron, he just like, all right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna film something. We're gonna give them like all of our content, the craziest things we've done, and uh, and it worked. Yeah, and and that I mean that's one of the times you know the the guerrilla marketing tactics, right? Uh, I mean that's a great uh, book and series of books uh, that if you're looking at how can I go and get my get my way without like going a, a traditional route or how everybody else is doing it, you know that is uh, what you need to be doing is you know go go left when everyone's going right. Um, so okay, so you're going through the process. Uh, t talk about how you were balancing that process with, you know, cause in your case, uh, was, uh, Tony, you're, uh, you're, you're the lawyer, right? I am. Yes. Yeah, so you, how are you balancing being a lawyer, apply, you know, get going through the gauntlet of applying to get to Shark Tank and, uh, and, and working with Slick Barrier? I mean, it's, it's difficult. That's for sure. Because for me, it's like, um. I mean, I have, I have a family and, 
you know, you have to balance obviously your family, um, court, and then and then obviously working with with Slick Barrier and and it's been. I mean, it's not easy, and that's why Aaron had to leave his job and work one hundred percent here. And granted, you know, whatever hours I don't, I, I really can't put here. He's putting them for me. Um, but but to be honest, it's it's nice because for me, you know, Shark Tank is more of like. Um, it's sort of like validation, right? Like, like we know our idea is awesome. We have patents. It's amazing. But, but Shark Tank is that validation. And for me, it's good because it's leading me to the point where I don't have to do, I don't have to continue being a lawyer. I can actually do this as my full-time, you know, job. And, and it's, it's really what, what I'm passionate about right now. It's hard to, you know, and that's the other thing. It's hard to even let people know uh, that I was going to be on Shark Tank because I don't want judges and and my clients to see that I'm, you know, I'm on Shark Tank because then they're going to wonder why is he not working on my case and he's you know he's on Shark Tank and so I finally had to tell. I remember I told one judge I said, hey, I'm not going to be there because I have the Shark Tank that I'm filming and uh, or no, it was because it was airing and I told him uh, we were doing a lot of media and I told him I couldn't be available because I was going to be on Shark Tank on Friday and. Uh, he, he had to tell everybody it was uh and they, they think it's pretty exciting but for me it's pretty much coming to an end that i can just do this entirely 100 percent of my time that that is that is awesome yeah i could see that being uh a, a sticking point especially like hey you know what you're supposed to be helping me and doing my thing but you're you're running around being on shark tank you're doing going yeah. through the process of doing that and um yeah, I I could I could see from a client standpoint I could see it being a problem for the judge. You know, judge is like, hey, you know, I seen one, you know, one lawyer, I seen them all, right? Like, yeah. there's always somebody else new. But from a client that's paying, yeah, I I could see it. You know, maybe being a problem, uh, or or them perceiving that that it's a problem, regardless of how you proceed to handle it. I had a voicemail on on Friday night and it was a client and he said, hey, congratulations on getting the deal. Now let's put time in my case and get me a deal. And so I was like, I saved that for sure. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I could see that. So yeah, I mean, it's a delicate balance uh, that you were trying to strike there. And um, how did you guys go about coming up with your 500000 for 10% uh, initial offer? So I think for us, the the thing that we know is we've got, you know, strong intellectual property, you know, that that's one thing that, um, that we put a lot of our time and effort into, um, you know, developing our patents, but developing them in a way where they're focused on utility. So we could use, you know, different types of materials to create these, these pest barriers. Um, and once we started getting those and getting those approved, that's when we knew like the value was huge because because we've seen the way people react to it. You know, have we had the budget to market the heck out of it and, and push it and all that? No, no, I mean, we haven't. We've done what we could with what we have. But just the people that we've inter interfaced with, um, especially here locally in Arizona, where, you know, scorpions is a massive problem. It's a huge problem. It's a it's a it's a multi million dollar problem that the pest control industry knows that they have out here and that people are really frustrated with. Me and him were frustrated with it. That's why we came up with the company. You know, my house was infested with these things and nobody, no professionals could figure out how to get them out. His son almost died, you know, in it, by a scorpion sting. So, you know, we, we, we knew that and we knew there was a lot of people with our same stories and issues. Um, but then all of a sudden we started working with other people in universities and really smart people. And they started telling us like, Hey, you could use this on rodents. You could use this on roaches. You could use this on this. You could solve this problem for it, this problem, this problem. And then once we got to that point and we started working with these universities and they were doing our efficacy testing. We we're just like, holy cow, this could really change the way people perceive and use pest control. Um, so I think for us, like we put in a lot of that work, a lot of that effort, and that's where we derived a lot of the value from for what we were asking, um, especially once we got 
these patents, you know, approved, which for us, we have a fantastic um, attorney that we've been working with that works in with chemicals, works with uh, with with coatings, I should say. Um, and he's been wonderful. And, and he was able to put us on the right track to collect these patents and um, basically put us in a position to where nobody else could design products that do this same type of thing and market them for this purpose without our permission. Um, and then that's where we derived a lot of the value from. And I think that's what ended up getting us really the deal that we got on Shark Tank as it was. Mm. So that's so that's where you you came like so I, I mean that, so maybe I missed it but the, that's where the five hundred thousand for ten percent kind of came out of was seeing the, the value of the patent how big it could be I mean the scorpion thing I have um a couple friends that live in in like the the northern part of Texas and Arizona uh, and yeah I mean I know that it's definitely not a, a small problem obviously you guys uh, were dealing with that problem as well and um. You know, I, I I I love the idea that it's not a pe pesticide, especially as somebody who has a dog in the house, and and that is a a problem. That's one question I wanted to make sure I did ask. Was it, so I think in the video I asked like, is this safe? Like my dog goes up to like my my foundation and starts licking it. Is is that a problem? No. Once the product dries, I mean, obviously it has obviously dry once time, it dries, like yeah, blood or anything else, any other products you're going to put on wet, but. Once it dries, it doesn't release any chemicals. It doesn't have any pesticides in it. It's just it's strictly a coating. It's what it is. Hmm. And then uh, and and then it acts as a barrier system. Uh, it works with pesticides or without. Like we have studies that show that our barrier will actually increase the effective effectiveness of pesticides if you still continue to use them. I still use them. I'd be hypocritical if I told you I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but they do two separate things. You know, our product's strictly a barrier. It physically stops pests from entering structures, homes, um, outdoor objects, uh, you know, food silos for agriculture, uh, bird feeders, and we're talking all kinds of pests, rodents, lizards, squirrels, squirrels, mm -hmm. iguanas. Um, we have people working with the product all over the country now for all these types of different issues which we can talk about like when we talk about the after effect of shark tank and what it's mm -hmm. what it's helped us learn uh, you know we've got all these people using them for you know trying to use it for woodpeckers out in california because you can't just you know kill a woodpecker they're protected you know and, and then but people don't want them on certain parts of their property or their homes when they can destroy stuff and they and, they, and then you know at that point they could you know accidentally um, get you know hurt or killed or something in that manner uh, same thing with like iguanas down in Miami like these things are huge problems and they climb up uh, electrical poles and they cause power outages so um, we've got a company out there working with the with the city trying to use our product to stop them from scaling these posts and this stuff and getting in and causing all this havoc so um, so those were all the things and we actually learned a lot of this stuff too after shark tank once it aired because we started getting uh, um, uh questions from all over the country all over the world like hey could this be used for this and this and we're just like yeah we, we think so we'd like you to try it um and we'll find out yeah i mean i i, I smile because of the all the um grease the pole t-shirts that we yeah. had here in philly uh because they they greased the poles uh, yeah yeah <laughs> um uh, yeah ironically you guys are in arizona so uh yeah. where, where the super bowl was did you guys get to go at all no oh, too we, busy too busy and we didn't think our investors would like us being at the super bowl <laughs> they're <laughs> like make us some money first and then you know then we're like all right now we can go yeah oh. we were, honestly we've been slammed since the episode aired like we've been slammed since a week before the episode aired so once the news got out here locally that we were going to be on the show, it, it just took off. Like, it was just like, we, we had all these plans. We were trying to get prepped for it. Uh, funny story. So they, they do let you know three weeks before, mm -hmm. right? But they sent us an email and we didn't get it. It went to our spam folders. 
So, so all of a sudden, one of the guys reached out. They called Tony, and they're like, hey, did you guys get our email? You're going to be on the show in two weeks. And we're like, <laughs> so we had to, like, rush to try to get things situated. And then we started, all of a sudden, the media just exploded out here in Arizona um, about a week before the show aired. And we were just scrambling to get orders filled, to catch up with all the questions. Like it was, it was, uh, it was crazy. And then it just started, it just kept escalating and escalating and escalating until we got to the show. And then all through the whole weekend and throughout and the week. And it's just, it just kept going. So like we literally just got caught up on orders yesterday. Woo! And so, time to do this interview. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, uh, we, we had plans. Before we knew about the show, we were going to go to the Phoenix Open. We were going to try to go to the uh, Super Bowl. We were going to do all kinds of stuff. And then all of a sudden the show hit and it's just like, nope, time to get to work. So, um, but, but these are all good problems. This, these, these are not complaints at all. These are good, good problems. Yeah, yeah. You know what else is a good problem? Jonathan Gannon. Congratulations, guys. You did it. You got him. Yeah. <laughs> he's not well beloved here, but I, I think he's under underappreciated, honestly. Uh here. <laughs> but I, I I think he might well, you know he might do a good job. But he might be in he might be a bit of a jerk because he didn't, wasn't like public facing wise because he, he didn't do a whole lot of interviews here. He wasn't very talkative. So well, and, and Tony's a big Denver Broncos fan because he's uh, from that area. And uh, so so we were kind of like, we both wanted to get, I wanted to get um, um, uh, Peyton, uh, Peyton for here. Yeah, yeah. And then he wanted Peyton in Denver, and then they ended up getting him, which I figured they would because they got that Walmart money. So they probably gave him $30 million. <laughs> and then we ended up with the guy that lost the Super Bowl. So hopefully it works out. <laughs> hey, look, he does. He, he, the thing that people hated about him here was that he played soft defenses um, and that worked against bad quarterbacks. But whenever we played, you know, really good quarterbacks, it, it didn't work so well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, good, good luck. I think. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, and, and like for me, I don't understand how you go from one young coach to another. I'm like, it just like, I don't get it. Like, why, why couldn't you just stick with this guy? Like I was okay with them sticking now. Now, granted, Aaron and I would go to games and we'd see our coach, oh. Cliff, and he was, so he, it was insane. He would be off, like, off on the sideline, away from everybody, just, like, thinking, or I don't know what he was doing. Never, never coming back and talking to the guys. He had no interaction with anyone. It was like mm -hmm. he was, the, like, he wasn't even part of that team. But but still, I, I'm, I still thought, you know, maybe one more year with him, but uh, we'll see. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, – <sighs> Yeah, I, I guess you know that probably didn't fit, sit well with uh, the powers to be, right? They like looking at it, like I mean, if you're noticing it, right? You would think that the person footing the bill is probably noticing it as well, and probably like, okay, well, we'll see. Like, I'm willing to give you know enough rope to hang yourself with to to see if this works. Maybe it's some genius move, you know, big brain move here, and it's going to be amazing. And it wasn't, I guess, enough. To make it worth a while, but hey, Russell Wilson, baby, we could have had him too. Well, we everybody here wanted him, but like, God, I'm glad we didn't. We'll get trade him. you. <laughs> oh God, no, no. Keep, I'll take keep, that other guy. Keep, keep him. Jalen is. They had a, you had a parade for him here today. They had. We didn't get a Super Bowl parade, but we had a Jalen Hurts parade because everybody is so happy, so happy that they've overlooked the fact that he fumbled. The, I don't know if you guys got to watch the Super Bowl at all, so, you know, being so busy, but fumbling the ball in the beginning of the game, which he doesn't normally—that's not a thing for him—happened in that game. I could, I, I could talk for twenty minutes about all the things that went wrong in that <laughs> game, uh, for a for a number of different things, not just like just the refs or just the crappy field. What is up with your field down there? God, that was horrible to watch. I, I don't know. That that was pretty bad. You know, it's supposed to be a natural turf too, so I don't I don't know yeah. what it was with it. I don't know if they overwatered it or what. The, they left it outside. It's been raining. I mean, I'm, I'm going back and rewatching it. I'm like, the, these guys are slipping on the field, and it's like, no wonder they had to play soft. They had to play extra soft because it's like, if they did man, you know, man on man, 
you're going to get burnt. Like you're reacting. And the only way you're going to react is if you can get your foot planted. And if you can't get your foot planted, because you end up on the ground, guess what? Yeah. You just gave up a touchdown on, on a, you know, on a ball that might not have been, you know, 20 yard, a 20 yard pass or 15 yard pass or something. Anyway, anyway, let's get to the big show, which is you guys walking down the hall. How are you feeling when you started your, your, uh, your path down the hall there? I mean, to be honest, we had we had did so many practices with our producers that um, as we're walking down, like, I don't know if we were necessarily nervous. I don't I wasn't too nervous. But what they don't show is at the very beginning, when I start, I stumbled. And then I was like, OK, like waiting for them to say start again. And they didn't say start again. So I was like, all right, I guess I got to keep going. And uh and, and, and at that point, I started getting nervous because I was like, I mean, I, I do closing arguments in my sleep. Like, I don't I don't need help with public speaking. But I man, I fumbled my words or something and then it threw Aaron off. And oh, my gosh. But uh, but the producer is like, that's what you don't. Wait, that's what's funny. You're there for like 45 minutes or an hour and you don't know what they're going to show. And then they move things around like some stuff that happened here. They put it before mm -hmm. and. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Aaron was nervous, but one thing we did is we really wanted Lori. And so the one thing we did, both mm -hmm. of us, I think, is when we walked out, we both had our eyes on Lori. Like we didn't look at any, I just had my eyes on her because she said before, that's one thing that she picks up on are, are these guys interested in me? And if they are, they're going to give me eye contact. And so you, yeah, Aaron and me, we're real creepy staring at her, you know? <laughs> pick me, pick me. <laughs> You know, it's 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 funny that you say that because one of the most popular episodes here on the channel is the one with the doctor, um, Easy Easy C Pack, I think it is, uh, and and the whole chauvinistic comment and all yes. that. Um, you know, a lot of people feel a lot of different ways about, it. and I I try to split the because like we, you know it is 45 minutes an hour maybe even longer that we didn't get to see i like to think and I, i'm pretty sure i said in that video i like to think that the producers weren't misrepresenting anything um because it, it it's almost like kind of a i don't want to say it's like a throwaway episode but it's just like it's just a moment in an episode right of it within a bigger scheme of seasons right so it's like you know, I, I would like to think that they didn't mis misrepresent the situation by editing it to make it look a certain way or anything like that. But you just you just don't know. Right. And I couldn't find anything to the contrary. But even the answers that were given was like, oh, man, like just not real solid. Like the words coming out of your mouth is not real, like convincing, uh, even if it is edited. Uh, yeah. I, I wasn't feeling it and a lot of other people weren't feeling it, but yeah. So, so staring right at Lori, giving her that attention, googly um, eyes. The googly <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, would definitely go a long way, uh, in, in her book, especially after something like that. And who knows how many other examples of that have happened to her that they never put in the episode, right? Like that's just one example that, at, that made it in the episode because that might've been the thing that saved it that ever, everyone, that the reason they even got to be on shark tank, you just, you just don't know. Right. right. Um, so yeah, I, I so so going into it, you guys were like you were honed in wanting Lori to, to why 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 Lori? What what about her or what she brings to the table made her attractive for your business? I I thought I mean she's obviously a product person, so she she knows product packaging, um, just all those little details that you need distribution, and it's a lot. Like we learn every day how difficult and how how much effort it takes to to produce product produce it properly package it properly ship it properly like there's a lot of logistical stuff that you have to figure out so so I, you know i knew that that she knew that part of the business um for me you know i knew that our weak point was going to be um uh, was going to be some of our financials, like like in the amount of money we had spent versus what we'd made, 
And I knew um, some of those sharks weren't going to particularly like that. You know, Mr. Wonderful being a, a prime example where I, I, I felt that like just from watching the show that he's just going to zero in on that 100%. Um, and then that's going to be difficult for him to overcome. I felt like with Lori Damon that we had like a shot of overcoming that, that they could kind of see through that and pass that a little bit more than some of the other sharks could. Um, so that's why I was really bullish on her. Those two main factors, I think for me, um, I just felt like, hey, I think she's going to get our best shot. And then we had watched an episode, um, and I can't remember exactly what the product name was, but it was a pest control product. And uh, Mr. Wonderful had kind of taken it from her. And we had kind of seen that and we're like, hmm, I wonder if this is going to make her a little bit more anxious to maybe get into it this time with pest control because it looked like she was disappointed she didn't get that deal done that particular time. It was some kind of powdery kind of stuff that you had to put down around the house or something hmm. um, similar to what, you know, pest control companies do. So, so nothing that's like really kind of different like ours was. So that was the other reason why I felt like I think she could be a good fit and like, she would be like, Hey, you know, I want to really try it with these guys and see if it, if it'll work. Um, and that was the main reason for me. So uh, is there uh, any reason that w why you end up pulling up Mr. Wonderful rather than, than Lori? When I don't, it comes to I think, being I think the up producer on the... suggested it, right? Or... The, the producers, um, we, we had gone back and forth on it. And they had, I think they had originally said maybe Robert. And then I think they said maybe we'll bring up Robert and Lori. And then they came up with this idea where they're, they're just like, well, Mr. Wonderful likes to call everybody cockroaches. So why don't we bring him up? And then Aaron, you tell him he's going to meet a bunch of friends of his. Um, and then we pull the top off like I'm doing right there. And then we show him all his friends that <laughs> I guess he met. <laughs> but, it, but it was funny because when he walked up, like he didn't walk up to us right away. They cut a lot of this out. Like, like they, they almost like kind of cut into our pitch. It was pretty wild. Mm -hmm. And then we called him up and then he came up and he went to the rats right away and he starts doing like his shtick, you know, like he's a comedian <laughs> and he's like talking to the rats and talking to the, <laughs> and like, Hey, I speak rad and like this <laughs> stuff. And, and then he, he's doing his thing up there and they're all laughing at him. And then we finally got him close to where the roaches were so I could pull the top off and finish up the pitch. So they kind of cut like a bunch of stuff out, like right here, right before he walks up. But it was it was based off of their suggestion. They're just like, hey, let's just do it with uh, with Mr. Wonderful and get him up there. No, I mean it makes sense. I, I you know, I, and uh, you know, to have the uh, the comments, uh, you know, the cockroach comments and things like that, and the rat comments. Uh, he he definitely um, fit the bill <laughs> for sure. The but one funny, the one okay. funny thing I, I tell about that, which obviously they didn't show, was. You know, because it was scorpions, they don't uh, they they didn't want him standing on the scorpions for liability reasons and insurance and all that stuff. So they made it clear to us that under no circumstances do we allow Mr. Wonderful to stand on the scorpions. Like we're not we're, we're not allowed to do that. They said if he tries, stop him. And and so sure enough, when I unveiled the scorpions. All of a sudden, there he goes, and he starts trying to stand up on the blocks. And so Aaron's grabbing him and like pulling him off and saying, "You're not allowed. You're not allowed to climb on those." And uh, and he's just like, you know, confused. But it was just the funniest thing, Aaron pulling him off. Yeah, kind of grabbed him by the back of his suit, and I sort of pulled him back. I was like, "No, we were told not to let you close to those." I think that's so interesting. They let you guys be the the uh, ba the the slick barriers to uh, you know having Mister Wonderful protect him himself from himself. <laughs> but but you know one thing that that your viewers need to know, and maybe maybe you guys have talked about this before, but um, but it's a business. I mean, it's Shark Tank and and who owns it, and all the way down to Disney. It's like. They want to make sure that everyone is is protected. They want to make sure that um, it's clean, that it's funny and those things. But they really take a lot of effort to try to make sure 
things are done in a way where they're not um, where, where they're not necessarily dangerous, but at the same time, um, you know, they even with us, like they weren't even sure if they wanted us to stand on the scorpions um, because they they had to like really do research and we had to re share a lot of stuff with them. Uh, but they were very careful. Yeah, we had handlers that they had that they made us use, mm. made us pay for. <laughs> and we had to pay for them, but uh, but they they were you know pretty well protected with it because um, originally it was sort of like I mean we wanted to do it and the producers wanted to do it and they were they kept going kind of back and forth of it. They would really let us do it, and then finally they're just like, all right, we'll let you guys do it, and we can let the sharks stand on the cockroaches. But don't let any of the sharks near the scorpions at all, please. That was the big thing that they told us. Wow, you know, it, yeah, I mean, look, it is, it is absolutely a business, right? Like it's, it's, a, it's a lot of money uh, involved and and passing through the show, and um, that's, yeah, I, obviously that you want everybody to to be safe, um, but yeah, when it comes to the uh to to having scorpions because like well even just having animals on set like they gotta have like this like i don't think i saw a disclaimer like no animals were hurt in the making of this episode uh no i don't think they said right am i that. i don't i mean i might have missed it because i'm when i'm shooting this on the night of it airing i don't i'm not like watching the the opening credits or anything or the the ending credits so i mean i maybe i should go back and look at that but um but that's one of those things where it's like yeah i mean having a, a you know they should be disclaiming that they had handlers there to take or i'm sorry you guys had handlers there mm -hmm. to to take care of that's that end of it um but but yeah i uh I I love the fact that he was at least willing to to get on uh, the thing, and he was willing to stand on with the scorpions and and not get uh, not get stung. That's that um very interesting. Well, he's willing to do whatever it takes to make good TV too. So yeah, he probably saw him was like, ooh, this this might be a uh, you know a memeable moment or a you know a, a viral moment here that we can create. Me stand on top of scorpions like that, but um. But anyway, so going through the show, um, you know, you you guys know that you were looking towards Lori to get it. Um, Five hundred thousand for ten percent is a lot. I mean, it's not very often that she's done deals that big, uh, at least on her own. Uh, I, in fact, I don't know that I can think of one um, that is, you know, in the 500, regardless of the percentage of $500,000 deal, maybe, maybe there's like one or two out there that she's done um, that I can't think of off the top of my head. But, uh, but you know, that, that, the, you know, once you get to that level of amount of money, it's tough to get any shark on board. Um, so, so, you know, once, once everyone's, you know, others start going out, um, and I, oh, before I get there, I, I, I appreciated the fact that you guys showed up with your, your proof, uh, your, your, um, uh, oh, what are those things called? The, 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 oh, the yeah, tests. The, we had the, the, the efficacy studies. Ev yeah. Studies, uh, from, from those and, and, and knew right away, like get it in Mark's hands. Cause otherwise Mark's going to be like yelling F bombs and stuff that you, you know, you guys are, are not, it's not real or whatever. So that was a good move on your part. Yep. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and honestly, like a lot of Mark didn't share a lot, uh, or I guess the producers didn't include a lot of what Mark actually talked about uh, during the actual filming. But um, but he gave us like fantastic advice and, uh, you know, and and a lot of it we've even implemented. Um, so it's it, he, he did a really good job at like evaluating us in, in the short time that he had and giving us free advice. So, yeah. We were willing to take it. And they they were all real cordial with us. I mean, more so than what the the actual um the the actual airing showed. They were all very cordial with us. Like like they, they were fighting with each other. Like it is like a shark tank. Like they are they're going at each other. Um and they're going back and forth, back and forth. And uh but they were all very cordial with us. They all really liked the idea, they all really liked the concept. Um you know, they didn't all drop out in a row like it showed on the show. Um, it was it was much more spaced out. Um, Damon and Robert and Lori were in it to the very end. Um, you know, so it, it didn't like kind of all happen all at once like that. 
And then uh, Mark was out first. He was out early, like it showed on the show. Um, but his big thing was how we, and I think they did show it on there, how the we were making our money. Which I have questions about as well, um, because yeah. I don't think you know in the in the time in which, because you also got to remember when I film these, I'm filming them in order, and it just gets later and later and later as it you know as I'm filming each video. Um, so I I didn't quite get the because it was like okay, so it's like fifty dollars a can, a hundred dollars two gallons to do a house, um, and then the the four you were like it's fourteen hundred dollars to get. The, you know, to have somebody code it. And I'm like, that is a lot of intensive like hours there. If you're, if you're able to charge $1,400 for something where your, your cost of goods is a hundred bucks. Like, wow. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Cause I, I, I found myself a little confused on the math there or not the math, but just, just understanding what else was going into it that I, I was missing from that conversation. Well, I think the best way to look at it is is um, how much do you have to pay to paint your house? You know, if you actually took the cost of the paint, you're probably purchasing a few hundred dollars, maybe three hundred dollars to paint your house, but you're going to pay seven, eight thousand dollars to actually get the house painted. Um, so the labor is really what's what costs a lot um, when it comes to actually doing it and doing the it on the service side of it. Um, and I think, you know, Mark saw that and he was just like, well, you guys should be getting a bigger cut of that pie. He's like, why are you guys just selling the product? And we had gone through the whole service side of it and we had done it for a while. Um, but it's also, uh, you know, the, the cost of goods when you're running a service company are extremely high. You know, you're talking insurance, gas, um, you know, uh, labor, um, workers, comp, workers, comp, yeah. um, employee tax, <laughs> employee tax. It is. It, yeah. The, the, the ticket number is huge compared to like what you would sell basically, um, directly to consumers. Um, but the costs are extremely high. Now, with that being said, I think he had a, a point there. And we actually took that back. That was one of the things that we took back. Him and Lori had mentioned, you know, two similar things in that in that aspect. And we took that to heart. And we've, you know, worked on, um, uh, you know, working with the other service companies and uh, doing more service, but in a way that's more like business centric, while still doing the product and getting the product out. Um, and then to go back to the product pricing, the other interesting thing that happened between now and then is we were working on new versions of the product right when it first right when we filmed back in September so a lot of our uh, costs were kind of in flux and, and we were still waiting for some of our testing to get back so now we we actually uh, sell the product you know differently than the way we were pitching it on the show um, we're actually using less product for the do-it-yourselfers um, but we actually have a little bit of a higher price point um, for the product itself because of the, the testing and the way um, it came out um, with the durability of it and, and how long it lasts and then the ability to just kind of redo the coding every few years um, and then make that, that process a lot more inexpensive and a little bit easier for the do-it-yourselfer. So mm -hmm. it was it was an interesting time in that we were still figuring out a lot of this stuff. But, you know, when they say, hey, you're going to get a shot at Shark Tank, you just got to go for it and give them what you got and then realize that things are probably going to change. And they, they have since then. Yeah, no. And, and look, those are I mean, those are all great um, reasons for it to be, you know, 14 hours. I guess my question combined with that was how did how did mark feel that you should collect that extra cash on the back end well what happens from is the we, installer we have so we have a we have a patent and, and so we have we have multiple patents and so we basically control how people can do this service right so like i mean mm -hmm. you you can we sell product we created product because there's no product on the market um, but if any company were to use a clear coating, like Aaron said a while ago, or even a dry film, and they use it for pest control, 
they would be in breach of our of our patent, so they would need to license it from us. And so technically, every time a pest control company does this service, in a sense, they're buying the product from us, but we're also granting them a license to do this work. Do so, so Mark was like, why aren't you guys charging them a percentage of whatever they're making? Instead of, you know, you're selling them product, they're, you're making maybe $50 on a gallon. He's like, why aren't you taking like 20% off of their cut from what they're charging their customers because you have that intellectual property? And, and he's right. And we had thought about that before. Um, but you know, I mean, that's why we're on Shark Tank. We, we want, we want to be able to bounce those ideas off of, but I think that's what he was getting to. Ah, and, I think, and, I okay. think the, and I think the other thing that is difficult for people to comprehend, and I totally get it is, you know, the time and the effort and the costs of the intellectual property, hmm. you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars it costs to get a patent, you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars it costs to get these custom made products made by chemists, you know, um, there's a lot of development and R and D that goes into it. You know, it's, it's always difficult. I think, you know, for a company like ours to go on like shark tank and they're going to take a little snippet and they're going to say like, how much does it cost you? And we're, and we're just like, well, it costs us this much, but yeah, how much yeah. money have we put into it over all the years and, and not to mention all the time we've put into it just to get to that point when there was literally nothing on the market that did what we wanted to do. So you have to kind of incorporate some of those costs into it, the university and the efficacy testing. I mean, that stuff isn't free. Uh, it takes a lot of time, money and effort to get those testing together. I mean, we literally hired a person to work on our patent for an entire year where she, she basically, all she did was just figure out exactly exactly how smooth how hard um how all these coatings would have to work out in the field to where we had a a, a robust patent application that was about 60 pages long wow. so so um th those are a lot of the costs that i think a lot of people don't see and it's easy for for them to just to look at like well hey it cost you guys 50 bucks to make why, why are you selling it for 150 <laughs> and you're just like well here's the thing you know and, and uh, I, I had gotten into it with Damon on that too. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't show that piece of it, but yeah, <laughs> mm. they, uh, but, but those are the things, you know, and, and, and they're trying to make it consumable for people. They're trying to, you know, like Tony said, like they, they even kind of cut it and change stuff around and push things back and forth to, to make it as dramatic as possible. And they did a fantastic job. I, I thought it was a, an amazing episode. We were watching it at my house and everybody was like gasping. Um, you know, probably because we were emotionally attached to it, because obviously it's 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 me. But like it was it was pretty cool what they did. Um, but it but that's a lot of the Hollywood part of it, and uh, and a lot of times you don't see all the effort and the energy it takes just to get to that point. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. The um, yeah, I mean, look, an iPhone costs what fifteen dollars to make or something. This should be should be basically free, right? Uh, but obviously, it's the research and development that goes into it that that is the uh, the the real cost that isn't factored in when you're just breaking down part by part by part. So, um, yeah, no, all, all that. I mean, all that makes a lot of sense. But I could I could also see why on your front on your end, you know, when you're trying to gain market share, the last thing an installer wants to hear is, "Hey, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I just sold this to you for like fifty bucks." I need 20% on top of that too, uh, uh, you know, of what you're doing, business you're doing, um, where it could be like a barrier to entry for them to want to go and promote it. You know, if, if it's because it's something new, it's something that's not like every, you know, people, there's an education process to, to sell it to customers um, for mm -hmm. them to, to understand. And like that takes a salesperson to actually want to, to go and do that. Um, yeah. So, you know, so I could totally see where on your end, it's like, yeah, we, we should get a cut of that. We have the patent. We have every right to go and do that. Um, but maybe we shouldn't, at least out of the gate, because we want people to take the product. We want people to take it, you know, and, and run with it. So we get, you know, people coming back and, and building a, a, a sustainable business, not just a one time, you know, we got a you know, handful of sales from this person and this other company sold a handful, a handful of times. Um, and, and it's, you're not like actually able to go and build those relationships with those installers. Cause they're like, yeah, I got to give a big cut. So it's costs even more. And, 
you know, and, and they, they got to figure out again, their salespeople have to go and be able to sell it. So it's just, you know, the more it costs, the more it's like, eh, I don't know. You know, I've never heard of this before. It's a new thing, but now it's on Shark Tank. It's like, Oh, it's valid, you know, big validation stamp on it. Um, so going, uh, like you were saying, going through uh, the different sharks and having a, 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 you know, obviously they have to make it dramatic. They're they're world uh, class producers and editors that are working on this show. Um, so I'm glad to hear that you you enjoyed the the final cut and the way that it you know it it all came out. Uh, and now getting to Lori's deal, uh, bringing it like full circle back to Lori uh, from the beginning. The, you know, I, I didn't personally love the way that it was, you know, her offer was structured. I felt like it was, um, I don't, I don't know what the proper word is, but maybe a, a little bit of a cop out to be like, Hey, you know, I'll give you 500,000, but like only a hundred thousand of it's like actual money. Um, did that, did, did that play a part in your decision of to, to go with her at all? Like, obviously we only saw snippets of drama, but like in the reality of it, did that did that factor in? I mean, I think obviously going into the show, you you already have to think you have to think of a million things that can happen. Are they going to ask for a royalty? Are they going to give you? Are they going to you know want to give you money as a loan? Um, what happens if th two sharks or three of them are interested? Or do you counter offer? I mean, you really have to be prepared for any sort of scenario. But when she made that offer, you know, because here's the thing, when, when people are raising money, I mean, raising money isn't just getting cash for equity. You know, sometimes it's cash and it's a line of credit for equity. Sometimes it's all a line of credit. Raising money is, it, it involves all those factors. And if you look at it through that perspective, then for us, 500,000 is 500,000. I mean, yes, we have to pay her $400,000 back, you know, in two years under that term she was offering. But in reality, you know, we're asking for this loan not to help us in five years. We're asking for this loan because we need it to help us right now and into the next year. And we expect that we can pay it. Um, but but for me, I don't distinguish between cash or I, I, I know perhaps like our, our other partners, like, you know, it might be difficult for them to, to really stomach the fact that she she gets uh, to offer us uh, most of the majority of it as a loan, but it's still money. Yeah, and we. Uh... Oh, and I did look to Aaron too. I don't know if you guys saw. Like, did, is he going to counter offer? I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to. Yeah, we and, and 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 I thought hard about it. I thought hard about counter offering. I mean, we're still in negotiations with her, so we can't get like too too deep into it. Um, but you know, at the at that moment in time, they even told us. They even said they said, hey, you know, the producers were just like counter offer. They're like they they want you to counter offer. Um, but what ended up happening is a lot of the other sharks were were really needling her more than they even showed on the show, and and it was it was it was worrying me a little bit, and that the other sharks were kind of like, wow, that's a great offer. Wow, what do you guys to think about? And I just I just saw this look in her eye, and I was a little worried that if we countered, she would bail. And, and considering that going into the show, she was the shark we wanted. You know, I think that played a role into it um, as well. Um, and I know, uh, you know, Damon and Robert were really interested as well. They didn't really kind of relay that in the show the way they, they edited it. But those two were, were extremely interested. And I know Damon in his head was trying to make it make sense and trying to come to an offer with us. Um, but then when everybody had dropped out and it was just her, um, I, you know, at that time and moment, I didn't want to walk off the show without a deal. So we did it and, and we've done, you know, we've raised money in the past in a similar kind of fashion. Like we, our first raise was um, 150,000 and a $400,000 line of credit. Mm -hmm. So, and we were able to pay that off. And it, I mean, basically that's what was able to get us the IP. So we weren't too scared of it either. You know, it wasn't like, ooh, this big bad loan kind of thing. Um, and then I also remember at the show, like uh, a couple of the other sharks were, 
were like, no, you guys should take that. You know, you guys, that's good. Like you guys get capital. I, even Mark said that he's cause I think Mr. Wonderful or one of the other sharks was like, well, half of it's a loan or, or whatever they said. And then, uh, and then Mark was like, no, 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 it's capital. They get capital, which, you know, we had talked about, we, we kind of gone through it before. So it wasn't something we were totally, totally scared of. Um, I, I, I did think in the back of my head, I was about this close to counter offering, but it just, Right there, right when I'm looking at the sky. <laughs> should I counter off or should I not? And then it, we just, we ended up taking it. But but I think a good way to understand it too is that we, I mean, obviously you do Shark Tank and and we just get people left and right saying, geez, I was, you know, we'd give you cash for that much equity or we'd give you more cash or we'd give you, you know. But for us, I think our perspective was we really want Lori. I mean, we really want her to come on and help us like it's it's yes money is is important to us but at the same time like her background um her team you know her husband especially like they get it like they're they're very thorough in 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 what they they talk to us about and and we're excited that you know we have a chance of, of working with her and that's really why you know it's fun to have the exposure and it really did a lot for our business but but having her on board would be a big deal because I just think she could help us get to that next step. Like I said, I think they filmed that at the end that Aaron and I can do this in 20 years, but by having her on board, it's just going to, you know, accelerate the, the process. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, having the right, you know, the right person, the right team uh, there to, to work with you is just so, so important. And, uh, and cause it, yeah, it's not just about the money. Obviously you could go get loans, you know, uh, you, you know, you could get loans from other people. You get loans from banks. You can get money. You can get money. Money is not necessarily the, the hindrance, especially when you already have something to, you know, potentially hold collateral against, right? Like you, obviously you guys have, you know, you're, you're a lawyer. Obviously money is, is important, but expertise experience, uh, is, is super, super helpful, uh, for helping speed up the process. Cause like anybody could have a million dollars and lose a million dollars tomorrow. Cause they didn't spend it properly. They didn't invest in the right people, the right process, the right. Any, you know, they just spend it not the right way. Um, and they spent it in a way that gives them experience because that's what, that's what all failure is, right? It's just gaining experience. Um, and paying for it in time, energy, and money. Uh, but in, with the with having Lori, I think would uh, absolutely help you. It's a shame that you guys haven't uh, cl- been able to close your deal yet. Hopefully, you guys are able to get through that and 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 close that deal uh, in the coming weeks, if not months, um, and and all that. So leaving uh, the Shark Tank, uh, you guys seem like you were feeling really good. You head back home. Uh, what's some of the first things you guys did once you got back home? So, I mean, we were right in the middle of testing our, you know, some of these newer products that we had been working on for like the past year or so. Um, so we just kind of went back at it. And then we we knew that, the you know, eventually it would air. Even though they told us that like, hey, you know, you're not on Shark Tank until you're on Shark Tank. But I, we both had a pretty strong indication that they were going to air it. It was just too good a television. You know, at the end of the day, they're going to be about ratings and, and they're going to want to they're going to want to put it on. So uh, for us, it was just trying to get prepared for that. Um, you know, and, and we we with even with the Slick Barrier name, I mean, that that we just had launched that and rebranded last year. And that was strictly for our consumer line. So we still had a lot of work to do. Um, and then uh, right when we got back, we, we actually had a big conference out in Boston that we flew out to for, it's called Pest World. Um, and then from there, we just kept working at it and trying to get set up because we knew the, the big bomb was going to happen once they aired it. And that seems like a, a conference that should have Kevin O'Leary speaking at it, just stomping out cockroaches left and right. Stomping out cockroaches, yeah, Pest World. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So once you guys found out, obviously you said you, you only had two weeks uh, to prepare. Um, what what did you do in preparation uh, in those two weeks to get ready for the airing? Well, we we were doing two things. One was um, trying to get it. And I don't know if, if, if people realize this as much, but when you're going to be on Shark Tank, you, you want to try to get as much um, 
or as many eyes watching the show as possible. So the way you do it is you go straight, you do a lot of media stuff. You try to do a lot of public relations. So we did a ton of public relations, newspaper interviews, television interviews. Um, I mean, it was, it was nonstop, just trying to get as much exposure out there as possible. And then we had to figure out how we were gonna package the product and how were we going to put it on our site um, we did a lot of testing too. So even in those two weeks before it aired, we were able to kind of put our products in a way, package them in different fashions and see if they would sell and what price point would work and what was the feedback. So we really worked on that before we got to the air date. Um, but like Aaron said, I mean, almost from the beginning, once we, once we told uh, the public that we were going to be on Shark Tank, it just, it just went it went off. It went, it just went nuts. And, and so we're constantly trying to figure out like packaging and, you know, should we include this and not this? And, you know, how should we, should we have, you know, this much product and how many products should we be offering on the website? What should be on the website? And, um, but, but the other part of it too, is they, um, they do meet with you like Lori's team. She, she did meet with us and, and they give you pointers on, what your web website should look like. What are the things that you should prepare for? I know a lot, Aaron worked on a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a lot of anticipation. And like, like I said, like once we started doing the PR stuff, it started happening even before the show aired, it was wild. Uh, it almost caught us off guard, like to where the point to where we were just like, Oh man, how are we gonna keep up with this? We're not even, we're not even, it's not even at the show time. I mean, we were working nonstop up until like right when the show was going to air. Like we were, we were, we were here at the office, working and trying to get out orders and doing things. Um, it, like literally right before the show oh, airs, yeah. my wife like, is texting me like, "Hey, where yeah. are you? Everybody's showing up at the house." And and I went home for I went home before I went to errands. I watched it with uh, back at home, and um, I literally when I walked in, it, it, it the, the episode was airing. And, um, and I'm sure same with Aaron. So we were like working to the last minute. Mm -hmm. And it's all, and, and, you know, and, and if outsider looking in, you could say like, well, you know, why don't you guys have help? Why don't you have this and that? But it's always a big unknown. It's like, you know, do you hire five people? And then what happens if, you know, you go through a little bit of a downturn, like, Every time you hire people, it's like kids, like you got to take care of them. You got to make sure you treat them right. You got to make sure you have work for them. Like you're, you're investing in them. So it was always like a, a hard decision for us to make. And we've, we've tried to do as much as we possibly can um, before we, you know, bring people on board. And we just, we, we literally got overwhelmed, like the, the response and, you know, thank you to anybody that's in Arizona or around the country that, that ordered or sent us questions. Uh, you know, thank you. We appreciate it. We're still trying to get back to everybody. So, um, you know, I oh, apologize yeah. if we if we haven't, I if mean, we missed your question, please email us again or yes, reach out. Like thousands of questions and oh my goodness. But it, it was pretty amazing. The whole thing was just a pretty surreal experience and, and it started happening literally a week before. So it was, it was wild, wild ride. It's still kind of on that roller coaster really. And we worked, we worked, Aaron and I were here a couple nights ago, get making sure all the orders were out. And, and then it's hard because you get out thousands of orders and you're like, did I miss one? Did I miss two? And, you know, and, and then you, and then you do miss a couple. And then of course you, you feel bad about it. And these poor people are, are calling and you're like, you know, geez, I feel so terrible. Like, but we're getting to that point where we're like, okay, now we think we can, we can handle thousands of orders at one time now. Wow. Wow. I haven't, even, I haven't even shaved or gotten a haircut since uh, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get cleaned up here pretty soon. Hey, you know, there's more important things, you know, to life than, than worrying about being shaved or, or getting a haircut, you know, make sure people are happy. And, and I love that your, your answer to, 
you know, why don't you just hire people? Well, there, there, there's a lot, it's a, it's a lot of responsibility and, and, you know, it is like having children um, and there's, you know, taxes that need to be paid on that. And there's a lot of, you know, th- like just a lot of aspects to it that I think a lot of people just kind of don't think about or don't want to think about um, or don't know about. Uh, it, it's not, you know, not everybody is able to just take a part-time job, you know, and be like, yeah, you know, I'll pay or I'll pay like one person under the table. Okay, cool. Like for a part-time thing. But once you start talking about like, I need them every day, but then are we, you know, now we got to project a little bit further and figure out like, are we going to need this person? Are we going to need this other person and this other person? And, um, and the processes in which they do, right? Like you got to teach them. They don't know your business. They don't know, you know, what you do go through. Yeah. You have people that might have some experience, but not all, you know, not everybody, not every person you're going to have access to, to hire is going to have that level of experience. Yeah. Yeah. And you put a lot into it and, you know, like you said, getting people trained right. And, you know, it's a lot easier for us to, to make mistakes and pivot really quick um, than to have other people, you know, do that same type of thing for you. And, and how do you manage it? And it's, it's always, again, good problems to have. Don't want to sound like we're complaining about anything. And, and me and him don't mind working hard. We grew up you know, we, we, we didn't grow up with a lot of money ourselves. So we've done really well for ourselves even before this whole thing happened. Um, so we know what it's like on both ends of it. So, but we, we, and we're not afraid to work and work hard at it and put in the time. And then there will be a time where, you know, me and him will be on the golf course and other people will be taking care of this stuff for us. Absolutely. What, uh, what is the future of slick barrier looking like? It, it's insane. Honestly, it's, it's unbelievable. We have, you know, there's the idea of licensing the technology, you know, and, and licensing the big brands and letting them run with it too. Um, going international, that's a huge one. Um, focusing on rodents. Rodents right now are the biggest nuisance and, um, and it's getting tougher and tougher to, for, for cities and states and even countries to deal with them. Um, because it's, it, you know, exterminating them causes a whole slew of other issues with the, with the environment. And so the idea is, is can we, you know, can we utilize our product to control rodents? And we, and we know we can. Um, so that's going to be one huge aspect of our business. Um, not to mention, uh, we, we, we got a bed bug study done. I don't remember if we had that study done before Shark Tank. Um, we might have been right in the middle of it. Okay, and, and so we got our bed bug study done, and it was it's effective. It works on bed bugs, and um, you know, so we have a few of those coming out. Um, we uh, distribution is going to be big. You know, Home Depot, Lowe's, a lot of those companies. Like whether we're going to put our products in there, um, and then packaging, and you know, we're hoping that like a lot of people that have been on Shark Tank, that we can be more. Um, uh, that we can we can manage the business more at our desk than than in the warehouse, but you know, it'll it'll take some time, but we'll figure that out. Yeah, yeah just the 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 number of responses we got and and the number of questions we got about like, and I think I mentioned this earlier. You know, we we need to process all that data. Like, there's parts of this country that are struggling with pests, even things like squirrels that we think we could use the product on birds nesting bats um, that we think will will help and, and we want to get to all that and see where those really trouble spots are because you know obviously here in Arizona the big cult, the big villain out here is scorpions but there's a lot of villains out there that we think we could help with with this product and the way it works and then even keep improving upon it and have different variations of it and different products that come out uh, you know, this, this industry hasn't changed much since like the 1960s, you know, it's always been just what, what kind of pesticides are you using? There, there hasn't been a lot of innovation in it. And, um, and so it's, it's ripe there for somebody to come in and do things a little bit differently and take care of some of these pests in a more, uh, you know, a kind of cleaner, easier kind of way, do it yourself kind of way versus just constantly relying on, on chemicals. Does that, does that also include termites as well? I mean, we're working to try to figure out termites. Termites are Because, I mean, they fly. 
Well, and, and like with termites, fly. they're just they're they're really good. Uh, uh, the way they've been explained to us is, I mean, they can they can tunnel up glass, and so the idea is is how can we use our product to keep that from happening? Um, there's you know, and there there's not a lot of um, um, barriers for termites. And so we're hoping that's one of the next big areas and challenges that we that we try to um, to resolve. Yeah, we've got a couple ideas in the works for them. We've we've we have half tested our product for termites, and it did do a, a decent job of slowing them down a bit, but not enough for us to make like a claim on it. Because, like Tony said, these things can literally build their little tubes up like a piece of glass. Um, so. And so I don't think, I think we have to have a different kind of function, but that's another thing we're really excited about. Once we establish this line of products, we want to start looking at those other insects. The next ones. And pests, not just insects, I mean pests. Like there's a lot of pests that are mammals and lizards and amphibians and all kinds of different stuff that we want to be able to uh, look at it in a kind of a different way um, and hopefully find some solutions that are a little bit more permanent, a little less insecticide use and insecticides don't get me wrong they have their place um I, I think they're an absolute necessity i would be hypocritical i use i still use insecticides on my house i use a lot less than i used to but i use insecticides on my house um but uh but i think there's a big opening for different ways of thinking about how we we handle these pests and, and how they interact with us on a daily basis yeah, I would think that um, by reducing the amount that can get inside of houses would ultimately reduce the amount that can like breed and and get, I mean, with maybe the exception of ants, you know, because ants are underground and you know they can take over a whole backyard if they really wanted to. Um, versus like a lot of these other pests that you know being inside a house is a lot more, you know comfortable to, to, to find and to breed and to uh, have access to food and, and water and, and all those things. So I wonder like what the, you know, ramifications are, you know, by reducing the potential for pests to get into houses by, you know, to reduce the amount that they can uh, breed and, and reproduce. Yeah. And there's a whole, uh, the, the pest control industry, it's called integrated pest management. That's the the term that they mm -hmm. use to describe what we do. Um, and, and it's been around for a long time, but there really hasn't been a lot of breakthroughs with it. Like it's been like one of those things where they preach it and they talk a lot about it and they want to do it, but they don't have a ton, a ton of products that they rely upon uh, to use. And integrated pest management still means using pesticides, but in a in a smarter kind of way, where you rely on these barrier systems and other things to to help out that process. Yeah, I mean, I imagine it would uh, help collect those those like if, you know, I, I'm imagining you put the barrier on, and then you put not at like you don't need 12 inches away from the house. You put like six inches because if they get to there, they're gonna fall down and basically collect right there where the pesticides are, um, and and just have a higher percentage chance of coming in contact with the pesticides. That's exactly it. You got it. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's this is the big brain thinking. I don't know. I yeah, I'm just making it up as I go. Got it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, it all kind of works together to to make a better system is what we're trying to do. Yeah. No. And I think I think it makes a lot of sense. And and you know having pesticides around and even in the grass, like it really stinks having a dog because I I don't yeah. want to spray pesticides and you know we have ants in our backyard. Um, sometimes they're worse than others, but once you have a like a pro, you know once they start to to really get out there, it's tough because like I can't spray it because I don't want my dog getting sick or dying or whatever or whatever yeah. animal you know ended up dead in my backyard from it. So. Um, you know, I, I think having that, that combination would, would, uh, really, would really help. And me being in a slab, I mean, we are honestly in a slab, on a slab, uh, house, you know, having that barrier, I think would really, uh, help with, especially with the ants, uh, being able to, to get in. Yep. And a lot of companies realize it too. Like there's, you know, there's legislation, there's other countries that have banned a lot of these insecticides. Canada is a huge one. We get so many requests from Canada because they've banned a lot of the rodenticides that they just can't even use those old products anymore. So they need a different solution. 
So, so the industry really needs it. I, I you know, I, I totally feel that. And when we talk to the really smart people in the industry, the ones that are really forward thinking, they realize it too. They're just like, yeah, this is something that that we need to have in our toolbox to be able to to solve these problems for people because um, you know, insecticides, insects are a lot like viruses and, um, and and other kind of bugs where they develop tolerances to this stuff and you have to use stronger and stronger stuff and um, you know, you get to a point to where that stuff starts affecting other parts of the environment and um, and you know, and there's going to be regulation on a lot of it that comes down over the years. So, so the industry has been really good to us too, to work with. And they, you know, we've, we go to these events and we talk to them and we're real bullish on working with them. They've kind of brought us in and like really sort of, you know, accepted what we're doing. And, and a lot of them are excited about it, especially the forward thinking ones that are sort of thinking beyond what they're doing right now and kind of like what these next evolutions are. Hmm. Ah, I, I love it. And I guess my, my last question uh, would be, because uh, I think I mentioned it in the, well, I know Robert mentioned it, and then I kind of brought up like a lot of the bugs that we get come through the garage uh, door. And, Cause I think I said, I, I got to get like a new gasket to my door. But in the meantime, um, I get a lot of crickets up under there uh, in the garage. Um, so being able, like, I guess, would you, would it, would it help at all to apply it to like the ground, like to like the, the concrete slab, like to, like to prevent them from being, I don't know. No, it, 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 it takes a vertical surface mm. and, um, and there's, there's a little bit of a misnomer, you know, when, um, when, how people think they enter homes and stuff, especially in the Southwest, probably mm. not as much in your side of the country and every side of the country has got different architecture, right? But in the Southwest, they build these houses on these foundations. And then right, if you were to stick your hand right underneath where the foundation meets the stucco, there's usually a giant gap that goes all the way across. And uh, that gap is basically just easy access where the insects are just coming in and out, in and out, in and out. Most doorways, you know, if you seal your door pretty well, you're not really going to get too many insects that are just going to come in through those doorways unless the doors are open. It's all the external openings around the base of the house out here in the southwest, crawling up and getting up through eaves and different things on top. That's where their primary location is because these things are just path to least resistance. I mean, if they run into a door that's got that sealed up properly, um, like most newer doors are, or if you change your sealant on it, they're not really going to come through those areas. We get those that all the time. Like people think that, oh, they're coming in through my front door. I'm like, no, I'm like, go outside in your house, go to your backyard. I want you to fill underneath the bottom of your house, right where the foundation is. And you're going to find a nice little gap down there. It's called a weep screen. And the reason they have that little metal screen down there is they actually want the moisture to come out through those little holes. Um, that is where the insects are coming in and out. And then that's why you find an insect in your light fixture. That's why you find them in your sinks and in, in your, um, in your bathtubs, because they're basically using the walls to get into all these different areas. That's why you find them upstairs. I mean, we had a lot of people that say like, well, how does it get all the way upstairs? They kind of think that it crawls up their stairway, <laughs> like their like steps. They're like, how does it get up my steps? Or how do I see it? No, 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 no. They're, they're in between the walls, the wall voids, and they're going up and down, up and down all over the place. Here in the Southwest and where they build these stucco and slab homes is, is how they get in and out. And, and that's really what we're shutting down with our product is you put it around the base of a house and then they just can't access those areas easily. And if you look in your garage, <clears throat> that leading, if your garage is attached to your house and you have a doorway there, it's typical that in every garage, there's at least a little bit of a step up yeah, into yeah. that doorway. And that step up has a vertical surface. And so even if that vertical surface is a quarter inch or bigger or whatever, you still put our product there and it's going to provide an extra layer of protection. It's meant to be put on vertical surfaces. So when you're in your garage, you got to think, okay, can an insect really walk from the ground and go straight into my house? Or is there a little bit of a step up that I can stop it from being able to crawl up that step up and into the doorway? 
And, um, I, you know, and, and again, if, if you, if people are finding insects um, around their garage doorway into their house, if that's where they're finding them, then sure, you could say it's the garage. But like Aaron says, it's all, it's other areas. Every home has gaps. You know, you, it's not, it's not possible, to, you know, that we think that we know that to seal every single crack or crevice of your home. Uh, the way that pests are getting in is they're either coming in through that weepo area or they're attaching to your house and they're walking up the yeah, walls yeah. and they're finding a way in through the windows, you know, up near the eaves, you know, they're finding another way inside. And, um, and, and of course, that's how our product works is just to keep them from climbing onto your home. And honestly, if they were getting in through doorways, it would be so easy to stop these things. A couple glue traps a ton of pesticide, some dust right there, and you would just stop them. And that's what people do. I'll go to these houses and they'll have like like a pile of dust around their doorways. And I'm just like, I mean, yeah, if it goes through here, it's probably gonna die, but it's not going through here. If you go on the side of your house, they're getting in through the side of your house up the walls over there where you're not even doing anything. So if, if it was like strictly just like entrance ways, kind of like how Robert said, it would be an easy problem to solve. But these houses aren't built like that. They're not, they're not, um, what, uh, what's the term, uh, hyper, you know, where things like are sealed oh, up. Um... Yeah, that's not the way architecture works. They're, they're made to breathe and you're, they're like made hermetically to th- sealed. Is yeah. That, is that the term? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People get this kind of idea <laughs> in their head that the only way in and out of my house is the doorway. For a human, <laughs> yes, that's true. Like, you're not going to get a human that's going to sneak in between your, your yeah. stem wall or whatnot, but these insects work on an entirely different level. They're teeny tiny. You know, you know how the the width that a, a scorpion needs to get in your house. No, I don't it, live in the southwest. <laughs> they can get in uh, with the width of a credit card. That's how easily wow. they can squeeze in. So, so it doesn't take much. And then, and, and um, if it was just the doorways, it would be so easy to solve. But that's not what the problem is. The problem is the entire buildings. Buildings breathe. They're alive. They move. They absorb water. They stretch. They uh, shrink. You know, you get like a heavy rainstorm out here in the summertime, and um, that that building's going to kind of expand, and then all of a sudden the rain goes away out here in the desert, and it's 115. It's going to shrink up really quick. So you're going to get all these little gaps and stuff. And and think about if you're this big compared to how big we are. You know, those gaps are going to be the size of doorways, but they're all around the house. They're, it's it's not going to be the, the actual doorway. So that, that's a big misnomer, I think, that people kind of get uh, confused about with uh, how, how the entrance is, how these bugs are getting in and out. Well, when I say garage door, I, I actually meant the garage door, like yeah. the garage, mm-hmm. not not the entrance to the house. Like no, no, the no, house, no, 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 but, 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 but we're t- the, the entrance to the house, you know, for us is – Yes, if you have a big garage door and it's always open and, you know, free access, then sure. But, but I even spray there, cases, too, and it doesn't seem to make a, any bit of difference. <laughs> but if you focus on the vertical surfaces, that's that's where you're going to be able to slow them down for sure. Mm. And you could still do that on the interior of your garage. So yeah, Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Into the garage, then we've done, you know, a strip that goes all the way around so they can't get on the walls. But I tell everybody with garages, like the first thing you should do is make sure that that garage sill that you have down there is new because usually nobody ever changes them. They'll have houses for 20 years and you'll go look at that thing and it's just like falling off. It's like, yeah, the bug's just going to go right underneath it. Like go on Amazon, grab yourself a brand new seal or they sell like these big rubber pieces that they can put down right right Mm -hmm. where the garage comes down. And then that's going to kind of stop those insects from ever getting into that area. Yeah. Yeah. I have one in this, this, in this is my other garage, the, the studio's a garage. And, uh, th- I had to put one in here cause I had water coming up underneath the garage door whenever it would rain. So, uh, cause my, my driveway is not pitched well <laughs> at all. It, it's pitched into the house instead of away from oh, the house. Man. Um, a- yeah, it's not great, but we put this <laughs> rubber strip down, you know, with the, with the, na- the, like the liquid nails or whatever. And, uh, and it, and it's been perfect ever since. You know, what's weird is I get worms in here. Like oh. every once in a while, like uh, there's just be like a random worm. Uh, like, I mean, this is, um, uh, carpeted, like, uh, like industrial carpeted. Um, it'll just be like a random worm, just like 
in the middle of the floor and i'm like what like how <laughs> where did you wow. where did you come from i mean it's it, the, the, the i you know the uh it's not all boxed out there's you know you can see like the um the center block uh around the outside so i'm guessing that there's somewhere that it's coming through the ground or something yeah and through a crack somewhere i don't i don't know but every it's, it's not all the time just every and every couple of months i'll see a worm like in the middle it's of the, the floor nice. yeah yeah I put, like, a, a blocker <laughs> it, there's like a door over here right that goes to the other garage and i put like a blocker across the bottom of it to stop well mostly cold air but also some of the bugs um but yeah so it's, it's just weird it's weird really weird um i never see worms in the other garage just just in this one um so, one. <laughs> yeah but uh, but I, I'm curious. How did you guys come across my video? Did somebody reach out to you and tell you about it? Or were you googling, or oh, how, how did you find out about it? All all separately, honestly, because there's three of us. There's Aaron and I. We're the ones on Shark Tank, and then we have another partner, Christian. And um, mm -hmm. for me, I got up in the morning, and or it was like pretty. I think it was the next day because you you must have did your commentary like super quick. But he that found night. it on YouTube. And he's like, Dad, check this out. And so, of course, we watched it. And because uh, and for us, we're like, oh, my gosh, here come the, the, the naysayers. And then sure enough, it was a good video. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, uh, the other the third guy that works with us, he right away starts sending it to us. Did you guys hear this guy did a review? And so then we're like, oh, and then pretty soon, like everyone was talking about it. Like this guy did a review. So we're like, okay. Um, and I think at the end, you may have made a comment about like reaching out or maybe, maybe we should reach out to you. And so right away, my son was like, yep, you got to reach out to him. I said, all right, I'll try to track him down. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so glad to hear that. That's uh, that's the, the one call to action. I uh, Well, the one verbal call to action that I have usually per video uh, is to get them to reach out and, and we get to have awesome conversations and learn and, uh, and teach at the same time. So I, uh, I appreciate you guys. I'm glad you, you watched the video and, and weren't, you know, uh, too scared to, to, to hit play and, um, and enjoyed, you know, I, I try to keep it positive. You know, it, we, we, I, you guys are real guy, you know, real people. So, it, it, you know, the sharks are playing a character for the, you know, to a certain extent. Extent. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's important that we always look at the business, you know, from or I try to look at everything from as many perspectives as possible, uh, because like I don't I don't live in the Southwest. Right. Like I don't have scorpions potentially coming into my house. So, uh, I, you know, I can't per, I don't purport to know everything. And I'm just, I'm learning just as much as I'm trying to teach and explain and look at different angles and perspectives uh, as much as possible. So uh, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. And uh, and, and and funny story. You guys said you have time for one more funny story. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So so. And this is really cool that the show does this. So, like, speaking about, like, hey, you know, bad reviews, blah, 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 right? So, you get on Shark Tank, and we, we've seen the, the, the nightmare stories that happen on Shark Tank and, um, you know, those kind of things that happen. Um, but it, it's funny because after you get off of the show, and we were the first ones on. We were the first guys to get out, and we had to get up super early and get all the insects ready. So, it was, like, nonstop. Like, it was literally, like... We were going from like six in the morning all the way to like two in the afternoon. It was nuts. Um, no, no stops, no breaks, nothing. Um, but then after the show finishes, um, they actually take you in, you know, back in these these uh, the, the dressing rooms, and they actually have you talk to a therapist. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so they they, oh, they yeah. say like, hey, there's going to be this lady that's going to talk to you. You know, because obviously this is a huge deal. I mean, I think you spend your whole life doing this. Like, you know, you know, we, we've been working on this for about nine years. So, you know, it could be a traumatic experience. Like like if a shark just kind of brutalizes you up there, right? So, so they actually have you talk to like a therapist, which is really smart, right? I mean, I think it's really productive of them to make sure that everybody's good. Everybody's in the right mindset. So they have the therapist come out and he comes out and starts talking. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's cool. We, we talk through our things. And then Tony, like literally, like all of a sudden I turn around and he's like literally laying on the couch. <laughs> like he's at the, at the shrinks and he's just going through everything. From the beginning to the end to his childhood, it was, <laughs> it was great. 
it was it was hilarious. Oh, Jeez, that was funny. Oh, I think we lost them. I mean, cut off at the one thirty mark. Oh, oh sorry about that. I don't know what the heck just happened. Um, uh, sorry. So he was laying. He's Tony's laying back on the couch. And go ahead. Well, and it was funny too because when they told us that there was this therapist that was going to come meet with us, and I mean, she's obviously licensed. I think she's even a psychologist. But um, she, um, I thought it was kind of funny. Like I was like, this is kind of like, like why would they do this? Like this doesn't make any sense at all. Like so dramatic of them. And um, and honestly, when I finished that show, like I was so like emotionally drained and, and like overwhelmed. <laughs> That like if she was willing to listen. I said, "All right," and I just I don't know. I don't remember laying down, but it kind of seems like I did. And uh, <laughs> he did. And at the back. end, she's like, it was she, a whole session. She'd give me her card. She's like, "Reach out to me. <laughs> You're not gonna hurt yourself now, are you?" I'm like, "No, I'm good." And she's like, "Okay, just making sure. I got to go help the next group." <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> well, you know, it, it is it is smart. They they you know they want to make sure that people are are doing well. And I forget, I I, I want to say uh, this might have been a story that was told off the air by somebody who I haven't actually had on the show yet. But but they and this was like real early on, like season I don't know, like in the first three or four seasons of the show. You know, the the the, the I think one of the producers actually like reached out a few days afterwards as well to like check in and and make sure everything was was all right because uh, this person had been it, it had it was a it was a kind of a brutal situation <laughs> yeah uh, that happened in the tank and um yeah I so I. I you know, I, I I always I always say like they're they're world class uh, organization to put you know put together um, that have really great people that that do seem to genuinely care for me. All the all the people I've talked to, uh, it seems like they genuinely care about making not only great TV but um, you know a winning uh, situation for the the entrepreneurs that come on and and are rooting for them and and stuff like that. So. Um, so I, I, which I think is, which I think is great. I think that creates, uh, I, I think that might be one of the driving forces behind the success of the show. You know, if you didn't have people that did that only cared about the the dollars, um, on the producer side, editor side, uh, then I don't think that you would have the the love, uh, to even when things go wrong on the show, the love to to frame it in a way that is like. Look, we all get it wrong. Like we, we're all human here, you know. It's a, um, and and really put paint it in a light that still makes enables you to be able to watch it with with your kid, as you guys said before, watching it with your kids, right? And and watching yep. it with the family. So I think that it's really uh, special the, what they have and and that they've been able to do it for so long and continue to. Hold, well, I think they have. I want to say one or two more seasons uh, uh, contracted for at the at the least, uh, assuming that they don't just like yank the contract. Um, yeah. But considering it's one of the most watched TV shows outside of like sports, uh, you know, it it absolutely is probably not going anywhere anytime soon, even after that, you know, when they renew or decide to renew. But yeah, uh, it's amazing yeah. that they've kept all the same. Basically, uh, the, you know, they have that core team of sharks that have just kind of done it in and in and out every year it's pretty wild i mean this is the 14th season it's pretty nuts and everybody's it heard is. of that show you don't find anybody that hasn't seen it at least once and that's pretty rare nowadays with the whole every the way things stream and everything you know what i mean I actually, I've told this story a couple times here. I, there is somebody I know that I was telling them about. He's like, oh, how's your podcast going? I was like, well, you know, I do the stuff on YouTube with Shark Tank and blah, 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 blah. And we talked for like five, ten minutes before his wife turned to him and said, do you think he's talking about actual sharks in a tank? Because that sure seems like what you're talking about, <laughs> what you seem to think he's talking about. <laughs> and I was like, wait, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about? And he's like, uh, no, I have no idea. And I'm like, wow, okay, cool. Like, and he, this guy owns his own business. Like, and he's, you know, he's not young or anything. He's not old, but he's not young. And yeah, yeah never had no idea what I was talking about. I thought I was talking about actual sharks in an actual tank. So that's funny. 
So I'm there's sure at least one person out there prior to me telling him and his wife being like, what the hell? Uh, Probably you thought know. you were doing nature show reviews or something. Yeah, something like <laughs> he just had no clue. Not not a not it's just complete blank look. Like, wow, I can't believe I didn't know what you were talking about. Um, or I thought I knew what you were talking about. Speaking of knowing what you're talking about, uh, where can people go and get to know what you're talking about when it's when you talk about slick barrier? Yeah, just go to our website, www.slickbarrier.com. Um, got our website on there. Yep, it's got some of our videos of it in action. Our YouTube channel's got a lot of videos on it. We, we actually just posted a video, our audition video from Shark Tank on YouTube. Oh, so sweet. So go, go check that out. We literally just did that today, so um, check it out. Um, it's pretty cool. And I think that was one of the things that really got us on that show, so... I will uh, definitely be going and checking that out. I think everyone should go and check that out. Give you guys some views as well as uh, learning that, you know, uh, what, what to do, what, you know, what uh, creativity they can borrow and, and think for the, you know, to, to kind of package their own thing and, and put it forward uh, with, with that. So Tony, Aaron, super Tony, super Aaron. I want to thank both of you for taking the time to come on here today uh, to the Joe Pardo show and uh, give the super entrepreneurs uh, an insight into your business, into your world and into uh, your Shark Tank experience. And I hope that you guys are able to, um, you know, close your deal with Lori uh, at the worst case scenario. You get some experience out of it, get some growth and some other opportunity. You know, when, when you know, everything I always everything happens for a reason. And whatever's meant to be is going to happen, you know, it's going to be so. Uh, but I, I really hope for your for your sakes that, that the deal with Lori closes uh, and you guys are able to make the most of that opportunity. Um, and you guys are welcome back anytime. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having Very us. Very nice man. to meet you. It was nice to meet each both. Yeah, it was nice to meet both of you. And I appreciate you sticking around to the very end. So if you haven't watched Super Tony and Super Aaron's pitch yet, go over here. If not, I'll see you in the video down below. Take care and go be super. All right. Thanks, guys.